Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Today we're going to be doing a review of a CPU that I didn't really know how I was going to feel about uh, doing a review on, but it is the Core i3-2100. Okay, so why are we reviewing this little guy here? So. Uh, to answer that question, we have to have a look at the last CPU review I did, which was the uh, Core i5-2400. Now, that CPU, uh, I looked at at uh, the very start of the year. Uh, can the, you know, Sandy Bridge i5 still came in 2018? Uh, I'm sure that if you're subscribed to this channel, you would have seen that video. It's one of my more popular videos on the channel. And I managed to get my hands on an i3 uh, through the dumpster dive, I believe, from memory. I've had a quite a few uh, good second-hand hauls lately, so uh, I managed to get my hands on this little i3 processor and I thought, hey, let's check out and see if it can do some gaming, uh, you know, proper high-end 1080p gaming uh, with a proper RX 480 in, you know, modern titles, the current titles, so uh, that's what I've done. Uh, now I'm going to pull up the benchmark data here, so we have benchmarked nine games, uh, we've benchmarked Let's see if I can rattle these off the top of my head. Uh, we've benchmarked Battlefield 1, Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, Dirt Rally, F1 2015, Doom, Fallout 4, GTA 5, Watch Dogs 2, and Fortnite. Haha, <laughs> see I can remember all nine. Uh, and also we've got a couple of CPU benchmarks. Now I've done the Time Spy and the Fire Strike benchmarks, uh, the 3D Mark benchmarks. I've also done PC Mark 10, uh, and we also have a Cinebench, a Blender BMW test, and uh, the last one I do is a Premiere render in uh, Adobe Premiere CS6. So, without further ado, let, without further ado, let's jump straight into the benchmarks uh, and let me get my little tablet. All right, so I've got a tablet with the data here. Now, uh, I should probably precursor this with a couple of things. So, uh, the test bench we've run with, now it's my 1155 uh, socket motherboard, so uh, standard test bench, it has 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM that runs at 1600 megahertz. Uh, it also has the uh, AMD RX480 graphics card, so that's that's the best card I own. Uh, for those of you who don't know the AMD lineup very well, it's about on par with the 1060, uh, a little bit slower in some games, a little bit faster in other games, and it works out Mm, plus minus about 5% performance either way with the 1060. So uh, that's why we've gone with that GPU. Uh, uh, for storage we've got a 120 gig boot drive, uh, it's a Samsung 840 Evo drive and a 1 terabyte hard drive to store all the games on. Uh, and other than that there's really not a whole lot else uh, that matters on that test bench. So uh, let's jump first, jump into the first benchmark here. So it's Star Wars Battlefront 2, and we're looking at an average frame rate of 52 frames per second, uh, and 1% low of 13 and 0.1% low of 3. So, this is the beginning of, well, it's not really the beginning, but it, it, this is going to be the story throughout the rest of the review. So, um, this CPU can, you know, with the help of the RX 80 it can run these games. Uh, but it stutters, it chops, and that can be seen in the frame rates here. So pretty much grinding to a halt in some points. Uh, and we'll go over that as the games kind of roll on. So, Battlefield 1 next up. Uh, another EA title, quite popular. And this was probably one of the better uh, titles that was tested. Uh, Battlefield 1 is reasonably forgiving with hardware. It's certainly not the... Um, on, the, on the same level as, say, Fortnite or, or uh, one of those more eSports oriented titles. Uh, but we're having a look at an average of 48 frames per second in Battlefield 1 uh, and 1% 1 lows of 27 and 0.1% lows of 23. Uh, also, I haven't mentioned all these benchmarks are run at 1080p Ultra, so uh, every single game I'm testing, I'm cranking these settings up to max. And for reference, uh, I haven't got any data on this because the data's that far out. I haven't done it in so long, so I haven't got really my Ryzen 7 data there to, to reference off. Uh, but in a nutshell, that RX 80 card with a CPU that can match it should be pushing 60 frames plus in every single title that's benchmarked here. So uh, 
if we're not hitting 60 frames per second, then that is pretty indicative of a CPU bottleneck. So uh, let's move on. Next up is Dirt Rally, and we're looking at an average of 52 frames per second, uh, a 1% low of 41, and a 0.1% low of 37. Now, uh, this game performs really well. Again, very forgiving of that older hardware. Uh, it didn't get too grumpy about not having, you know, a, a multi-core, quad-core processor, things like that. Uh, and, you know, as can be seen, it ran pretty well in the benchmarks. Albeit, with the RX480, this game should really borrow it to be doing 70, 80 plus frames per second, uh, possibly more. It's been a long time since I've done it, but it's well above 60 frames per second average. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's a bit concerning that the CPU is kind of bottlenecking that RX480. So, next up we have Doom, uh, and Doom is... It's kind of a medium game to run. It can be harsh on hardware. Um, and, you know, again, the results, 50 frames per second average, run okay, 1% uh, lows of 35, 0.1% lows of 30. And again, I hate to say it, uh, but that stuttering, um, it just is blatantly horrible through all these titles. Uh, this just, it's just so inconsistent and choppy. It's, it's, it gets very frustrating with this processor. So, uh, next up is F1 2015, and if there is a CPU that is a bottleneck, this game will turn it over. So F1 2015, I leave it in the benchmark runs because it's just so CPU intensive. It doesn't matter uh, what graphics cards you're running, um, the CPU matches with this game. So uh, we're seeing an average frames per second of 32, 1% uh, lows of 20, and 0.1% lows of 15. Uh, if this was paired with my Ryzen 7 system, I guarantee it would be smashing that 70, uh, 70 80 frames per second barrier. So, uh, massive bottleneck shown there by the i3 CPU, and you could really see it in the in the benchmark run where it just got really choppy. And uh, I mean, for a game like F1 2015, it's really really important that you don't have that choppiness. So. Uh, yeah, that, that was a bit of a concern. So next one was Fallout 4, and uh, it seemed to run okay. Uh, it had occasional stutters, but that's kind of indicative of Fallout 4. It's just a little bit of a rough game. Uh, we were looking at an average frames per second of 39, 1% low of 21, and a 0.1% low of 18. Uh, this should be really sitting around the 60 frames per second average. Uh, the game engine has a cap of 60 frames per second. Um, but that GPU can easily push 60 frames per second all the freaking time. So uh, you'll get odd 1% lows and 0.1% lows. Um, but overall, the i3 ran the game. Again, it's doing it, but it's definitely bottlenecking the RX 480. So uh, next up was GTA 5, and it wasn't a nice experience. Uh, I honestly have had a better experience playing this game on the PlayStation 3, so that's a bit of a kick in the nads for the i3. Uh, we're looking at an average frames per second of 30, a 1% low of 19, and a 0.1% low of 16. And the game, again, it really stuttered, uh, it didn't run very well, so a bit frustrating. Uh, that game is the one exception in this test. Every other game I run at uh, Ultra Settings, this one I don't. Uh, because GTA 5 does punish that graphics card a little bit, so we run this game at high settings, uh, everything cranked on high settings, the maximum distance scaling, all that sort of stuff, so you're rendering out as much of the map as you can at once, you know, single point at a time. Uh, and it is X4 MSAA on everything, so that's, that's the only caveat to this benchmark, uh, and that's the only caveat in the roundup per se. So, uh, yeah, GTA 5, a bit of a... Mm, bit of a fail with the i3. So next up we have Watch Dogs 2 and uh, boy does this game really, really punish uh, CPUs. Punishes hardware in general. Uh, now the RX 480 when paired with the Ryzen 7 on ultra settings it can run 60 frames per second um, but you know this i3 CPU and this game loves cores and loves threads so uh, we saw an average of 33, 1% lower 15 and an utterly abysmal point uh, one percent lows of four and i can tell you this game you would be driving along you know in the car and all of a sudden a new part of the map would have to render and the game would just lock like i'm talking hard lock for a good couple of seconds you really notice that pause uh and you know if this was my gaming rig i'd be eh, that cpu would be gone very quick if i was playing this game uh so 
They're a fail. Uh, and finally, the probably the most forgiving benchmark in this roundup, uh, Fortnite. Uh, so average frames per second of 75. Hooray, we broke the 60 frames per second barrier. 1% um, lows of 38 and 0.1% lows of 9. Not really sure where it got that 0.1% low of 9. It seemed to run pretty well. Um, I had no issues running Fortnite. And that's really something nice to say about that game engine because the Fortnite engine really is forgiving of uh, low-end hardware. So uh, that's a good result. Again, on ultra settings, so we'll take it. And uh, that concludes the gaming section of the benchmarks. So let's move into the synthetics one now. So uh, 3D Mark Firestrike, we had a score of 7,654. Uh, that is certainly not the upper limit of what this RX480 can do in this benchmark. Uh, so it's really, when, when you're seeing a CPU bottlenecking a graphics card in a synthetic benchmark that's designed for graphics cards, that's when you have a problem. So um, not getting the score it should be getting. I can't remember the exact scores from, from memory, but it is a lot higher than that 7,000. So a bit of a letdown with Firestrike. Uh, with Time Spy, same thing again. Um, not as exaggerated because... Uh, Time Spy is actually quite taxing on the RX-480. RX-480 is not the best card to run this game. Um, sorry, benchmark. Uh, so we got a score of 3,222. Uh, yeah, a slight step down from what the Ryzen 7 system I have can achieve. Um, but, you know, that's more of a GPU bottleneck title. So we'll, we'll glaze over that one. Uh, now, now we're getting into more of the CPU, pure CPU benchmarks here. So PC Mark 10. PC Mark 10 is a bit of an exception. It does everything in the system. Uh, and a score of 3,548. Not the best. Um, it's a lot higher on my Ryzen system, but eight cores, 16 threads, kind of expected. So uh, these, these last three benchmarks will make more sense as I benchmark more uh, processors which is coming. I have a bunch of i7s and a bunch of i5s that I need to do reviews on. They will be getting benchmarked with all these benchmarks. So this data chart will fill out um, over time. So uh, next is Cinebench and this is a benchmark that every single person will understand. Uh, we had a score of 266 uh, points in Cinebench which is uh, not fantastic, an overclocked Core 2 Quad Q6600 will match that score or better it. So, uh, really big letdown there for the i3, and it is showing, you know, this is really not a good processor uh, in 2018. So, yeah. Um, and then the just, the just slaughter of this processor continues with Blender BMW. Uh, Nine, 1,901 seconds, it translate to, translates to about 23-24 minutes, uh, I can't remember the exact figure, but it was not good. Um, even on an i7, third gen, you know, 3770, should be doing it much quicker than that, so that's really not a good score. Um, you're looking at at least half, if not more than half, uh, the time on the i7, so... Yeah, a bit of a concern for the i3. And um, last benchmark to put it out of its misery, Premiere CS6. Uh, the video it edits is roughly 10, 15, no, it's 10. It's about seven minutes, uh, I think, from memory. And uh, we're looking at 1,485 seconds. Again, about, I think it was 15 or 16 minutes. Uh, don't quote me on that, I can't do a conversion in my head. Um, but it was not good. Uh, I would not be using this processor in an editing rig. So, that is the end of the benchmarks, and I mean, the conclusion is very easy to roll into here. Uh, i3, 2100. The question is, can it still game in 2018? Kinda. But at really low settings and probably not at 1080p, which is a real letdown for this processor. So uh, I would not be spending money on this chip. If you have this chip, I would be getting it out of your system and replacing it with the i5-2400 or something a bit better. Um, and yeah, I mean, for me, this chip is a fail. Uh, it is performing like the Core 2 Quad Q6600, um, which 
great processor for its time and I've done a review on that over a year ago now and I've got to be honest that review hasn't aged well so uh, the Q6600 I'm going to lump it in this guy not good processors you shouldn't be buying this for gaming however if you are buying this chip for I don't know grandma's PC for your kids or just for a study PC or something that's not doing gaming it's just doing office tasks it'll do the job um, but it's got to be for the right price you know I wouldn't be paying more than 20 bucks for this CPU uh, so yeah that's the bottom line uh, I'm sorry to hate on this little guy I'm sorry if you do have this processor and I'm just spewing hate on it uh, but unfortunately it's time to say goodbye to this little guy it needs to be retired if you have it so uh, yeah a bit of a shame I was hoping for more but uh, yeah thanks for watching guys leave a like if you liked it leave a dislike if you disliked it comments down below if you have anything to add about that processor if you have it if you're thinking of upgrading to it uh, I'm sorry upgrading from it you shouldn't be upgrading to it uh, and yeah I will catch you guys in the next video